Good morning. What a beautiful morning it is. A beautiful week it's been. A glorious, just delightful week. Summer's upon us. Birds are chirping, although the heat has not affected us too much. Wanted to share an amazing idea about this week's Parsha, Parsha Shlach, and what's honestly one of the most challenging Parshas to understand, one of the most tragic events, one of the most devastating events we see in the Torah, and that, of course, is when Moshe Rabbeinu sends the spies, the 12 spies, to go scout out the land of Israel before they go conquer it so they can understand what's ahead. And they come back, 10 of them at least, come back with a very negative report. And the question that everybody asks is, how is that possible? How could they come back with a negative re report? What were they so concerned about? What was so problematic? They'd seen all the miracles that happened in Egypt so far in the desert. Why didn't they think that Hashem could bring them to successful conquering of the land of Israel? And when one thinks about this, it's, it's, it's very puzzling. And they were punished very severely. They were punished with... 40 year wandering in the desert. They were not now anymore going to go into the land of Israel right away. They were going to have to wander in the desert for 40 years, one year corresponding to each of the 40 days that they were scouting out the land. And Rashi comments that these people who scouted the land, these spies, were not just any regular people. These were the leaders of the Jewish people. They were the greatest people we had. They were very choshev. They were very important and significant and prestigious. How is it that they fell so drastically? So the Zohar, in the Kabbalah, he's quoted by the Mesilas Yesharim. The Zohar is quoted at the Mesilas Yesharim, which says that the problem was, is that these Chashev Anashim, these important individuals, these important people, until now, they were very prestigious and they had a lot of honor and a lot of respect and everyone looked up to them and admired them and they were very prominent people. And they were nervous that when they switched their realities, when, when everything changed, and when they were going to go into Israel and embark upon this new future, this new destiny, this new reality, that they would be diminished, that, that their stature would be diminished a little bit. And because of that, because of this potential decline in their honor, in their kavod, that forced them to view what they saw in scouting the land a little differently, a little more negatively. And therefore they came out with a malicious report on the land of Canaan. That's what led to the demise, that's what led to the destruction. This report, which we ultimately know, was, was given on, on the 9th of Av, on Tisha B'av. And the Talmud tells us that God says, if you, the Jewish people, are weeping on this night, I'm going to give you a reason to weep in the future. So the exile, as we know it, the destruction we've seen until now, it all ultimately stems back to that fateful report, that negative report about the land of Canaan. And it seems that that report only came, in large part, I should say, due to the nervousness of these leaders to lose out in their kavod, to lose in their honor. The Mishnah Pirak Avis tells us that kavod is one of the three things that can remove a person from this world. The pursuit of honor, it leads us to be irrational. It leads otherwise normal, healthy, functioning people to make foolish decisions. This desperate desire in, in searching for this honor, it leads us astray every time. When we think about it in our own lives, how many friendships have been lost? Because I went to that wedding and they put me with those people? But look at me, how could they put me with those people? I didn't get invited to that bar mitzvah, but look at me. How could I possibly not get invited to that bar mitzvah? I got, you know, they, they gave me in shul, they gave me the honor to do glila on Yom Kippur. But I, I should have gotten the aliyah. What's wrong with these people? I can't be associated with them. On and on and on. There's so many examples where we feel that our covet is slighted. And that leads us to, to break relationships and to act in erratic and irrational ways. And I think that's what happened with the spies. How does this connect, of course, with the Denver Nuggets? The world champion, Denver Nuggets. After 47 long, often painful years, the champion Denver Nuggets, how does it relate? This team, I think, is those of, those of us who followed it, we understand that this is very much, this team is very much against that mentality. If somebody has that mentality, they're not really gonna be a part of this team, they get traded elsewhere. 
You look at a few of the players on the team, I don't want to bore you with all the details, but just to give a few names, Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., these are guys, if they went elsewhere, would be the number one guy on the team, they'd be the star of the team. And on this team, they've resigned themselves. They, 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 they've accepted a role that, you know, understanding what they need to do. And they lean into that <clears throat> and they embrace that. And ultimately, they hoist the, the championship trophy and bring glory to this great city of Denver. So for all of us, we can hopefully look inward at ourselves and not make sure that we never pursue this honor, this kavod, because the pursuit of that is truly detrimental and can ultimately lead to horrific, devastating effects as we see with the, the spies. Have a beautiful, beautiful day.